All right, all right, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a reaction video. This one's from The Big Short. This is actually one of my favorite scenes. A lot of these reaction videos are blind. I've never seen it before. This one I have seen before. I love The Big Short, great movie. One of my favorite finance movies I've ever seen. If you haven't seen it, go check it out or watch it on VidAngel if you wanna bleep out all the, all the words and everything like that but it's a fantastic movie. So this scene you're about to see is about Michael Burry. He's gonna get confronted from one of his investors. I actually use this example a lot. When I talk to people about funds, this epitomizes why funds are so incredible. Why most people that are successful in finance end up running a fund. This little scene right here shows you exactly that reason. Now, if you know this page, my name is Bridger Pennington. We talk everything's funds and finance on this page. I've launched two investment funds, launching a third fund right now, and we help people launch and scale their own investment funds in private equity, hedge funds, venture capital, real estate funds, debt funds, almond farm funds for crying out loud. We've helped dozens and tons of people launch and scale their funds. So with that introduction, Let's dive into this clip from The Big Short. Okay, so this is Michael Burry, played by Christian Bale. He's He comes off as very I don't know, Asperger's or autistic, something like that. He's got a glass eye. Very, very uh, de- technical, and he just digs through numbers. Kind of a quant kind of guy. Not very social, right? You'll, you'll see his social cues aren't, aren't the greatest. But that's okay. There's a lot of funds that run off this like, like this. And by the way, Michael Burry is a fun guy to follow online. He recently this year shorted all pretty much as much as he could US treasury bonds. He shorted Tesla. He shorted a lot of different big things. He has these big plays with his fund. He's he's kind of known as this this short. He ever since this too as well, he's been just famous for shorting markets. And so it's fun to follow him and see what he's doing. All right, so see what he's got here. So he's listening to loud music in his office. He's got a bunch of math. They're down 9.3% right now. The people outside too, just they're like, man, I, no one can talk to him. Is that the real Michael Burry? Holy crap. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Didn't that look like the real Michael Burry? Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold up real quick. That looks just like the real Michael Burry. Okay, hold up. Here we go. There's Michael Burry. That kind of looks like him. Am I insane? Is Michael Burry in the big short? He might be. Let me see. Let's Google it. Hey, we got Google. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's in it. Okay. Come on, though. Like, am I... Just a side note, but I think that looks just like Michael Burry. Maybe it's his son or something. All right. Back to the back to the reaction. We might may have found a cameo Michael Burry in the... That looks... Man, that's crazy, though. It looks just like him. All right. So this scene, Michael Burry's been running... They have already shorted the housing market, okay? They are... Every month, they're paying premiums to hold their short position. That was one of the biggest things. He knew it was going to crash. He just didn't know when. So every month, imagine every, I don't know what the payments were, but imagine every month you're paying out 1 million or 5 million or $10 million a month. You are paying out every single month to hold your short position because you believe it's going to go down. Their fund is already down 9.3% this year. And right here, you're going to see one of their biggest investors walk in. So this is a big investor. No, he actually prefers. He's coming in there like, oh shoot, like crap. We got to stop this guy. And Michael's just got his music playing. They come in. Hey, They're like, shit, what's gonna happen? We have no confidence in your ability to identify macroeconomic trends. I don't know if you heard that. He goes, I have no confidence in your ability to identify macroeconomic trends. You flew here to tell me that? Why? Every, a, 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 anyone can see that there's a real estate bubble. Actually, no one can see a bubble. That's what makes it a bubble. That's dumb, Lauren. <laughs> it's always markers. Mortgage fraud was quintupled since 2000, and the average take home pay is flat, but home prices are soaring. That means the homes are debt, not assets. So, Mike Burry of San Jose, a guy who gets his hair cut at supercuts and doesn't wear shoes, knows more than Alan Greenspan and Hank Paulson. Yeah, Dr. Mike Burry, yes, he does. <laughs> it's Dr. Michael Burry. You can kind of see, right? He's he's quite an interesting, interesting character. So this is a common thing that happens, okay, in the fund world. Investor, now this is fund, syndications, anything. Anytime you take an investor money, 
this this is a common situation. An investor comes in. I have they're just their their patience is worn thin. Where's my money? My return isn't here yet. What's going on, right? And they'll do different things, right? And and it depends on your structure of your entity and business. Okay, and what's, what you'll see is just play out in a second. But you'll see uh, Steve Jobs gets vote. The investors got together and voted him out of Apple. Okay, that's that's in an ink, in a syndication. Sometimes people syndicate money together. The money can also vote and decide inside of a fund. When you set up a fund, an investor comes to get mad. You say, "Screw you! I have the fund. If you want to pull your money out in our little LP and PPM." You can, and you can write the rules. That's the best part of a fund. Hey, you want to pull your money out? Cool. It's a 50% penalty to pull your money out. Funds give you so much control. Watch this scene. That's cute. That's cute. Are you being sarcastic with us, Mike? He's really getting in his face. <sighs> Lawrence, I don't know how to be sarcastic. I don't know how to be funny. I don't know how to work people. I... <laughs> I just know how to read numbers. How big's your short position right now? <laughs> uh, just the 1.3 billion. And the premiums? Well, we pay uh, 1.3 billion. If you didn't catch that, roughly 80 to 90 million <laughs> each year. So yeah, like I said before, 80 to 90 million a year. He's paying in premiums. So every month he's paying out five to ten million dollars to hold this position to these banks. The first to do this trade, watch, it will pay. I, I may have been early, but I'm not wrong. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, Mike. You're managing a fund of, what, 555 million? In six years, it'll all be gone. On one- So yeah, I mean, it's a good point. If you, 80, 90 million a year, six years, it's in, the whole fund is gone on one position. I mean, that is a, confident bet and uh yeah it's it's pretty crazy the second quarter of 07 is when the adjustable rates kick in and the defaults will skyrocket yeah says you how much is eligible for withdrawal before they do say in the next two quarters if your investors panic 302 my god mike (laughs) 300, so if you didn't catch that, 302 million investors could withdraw if they wanted to, and they could, that's how much they could pull out, but the rest of it is locked up. It, I mean, it is it, it cannot be pulled out. Even if investors panic, get mad, it cannot be removed. No one will pull out. That would be suicide. I mean, I'm down 17% for the year, but if they trust me and they trust me. No one before. trusts you. I, I no one. several emails to... My investors letting them know that the, the <laughs> several emails to my investors and we're down 19% this year, but it's okay. <sighs> the second quarter of 07 is when our housing positions show returns. And uh, um, I've been very clear. People will withdraw their money. Watch, oh, that would be so stupid. I mean, the, the- so it depends, like I said before, it depends on how their fund is set up. Some funds, um, investors can withdraw their money on certain terms or certain notices or certain penalties. A lot of hedge funds, you can withdraw your money with a six month notice. It just depends, right? It just depends on what they wrote. Sometimes it's a year, sometimes it's two years. It depends, okay? Um, And he's saying investors are going to panic and pull out their money if they they know what's going on. If the fund's capitals drop too much, then the swaps contracts are voided and then the banks uh, get to keep all of the Wait a minute. Wait. All of it. What? The contracts are voided. The contracts are voided. Holy shit. So if, yeah, if, if investors pull out, the contracts are voided, uh, which is, you know, even a bigger bet. Oh, mother Michael, give me my money back. Michael, do you hear me? I want my money back. So this investor wants his money give back. Give me my money back. You mother And uh, I believe, if I remember right, Michael just said, I think he says, no, tough. We're doing this, right? And uh, it's that's the beauty of running fun. Now, of all the examples that you see in the big short, Michael Burry's, I believe his position was the most risky. I mean, this dude went all in with his entire fund. These other guys, 
they put a piece or a little bit in, you know, they still were, they still were sane. Michael Burry was insane and he put $550 million, pretty much his whole fund in this, um, one point, I think it was a $1.3 billion short position paying 90, 80, 90 million dollar premiums a year. It's crazy. Okay. Just absolutely crazy what they did. And it popped and it paid off. And he became one of the most notorious and greatest investors of all time uh, after that big bet, right? Now, uh, most managers, I think, would say, you know, we're going to do a conservative approach to this. We're going to do different strategic bets and, and still be diversified with our strategy. Michael, it looks like he went all in on, on this thing. And, and hey, and it paid off. But again, back to what I was saying before, that's the beauty of running a fund. This, that little situation happens all over the, the world of business. Anytime you've raised money, whether it's a VC startup, whether it's a fund, a syndication, a house flip, situations like that happen a lot, especially when people feel squeezed or pressured, investor versus manager, and it happens a lot. Inside of a syndication, other places, the investors have a lot of weight to pull on things inside of a fund. I mean, you are so protected from investors inside of a fund. That's why funds are so great. That's why most people that are successful in finance end up running a fund. It gives you a lot of control. It limits your liability and it limits your risk. And that risk, risk and liability comes from investors. You still have the same amount of risks of investing and doing business, but risks of investors trying to pull money out or move or try to you know strong arm you into a certain deal. Sometimes an investor will come to you and say, hey, Bridger, I didn't pay my taxes last year. Um, can you sell some of the properties and get my money out? Because I just, I forgot to pay taxes. And you say, no, sorry. The properties are not ready to sell yet. We got to still build them and develop them. If we sell now, we'll lose too much money. And you say, tough, sorry. I don't serve individual investors. I serve the fund. My fiduciary responsibility is to the fund. And again, that's why most successful people in finance and investing in business end up running a fund because of all those reasons. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.